Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Icicle Mine build. Uh, I'm currently level 95 and I kind of waited a little bit to make this video because I really wanted to play the character and make sure I'm giving you guys the most accurate information I can. So before I talk about anything, I'm just going to start up a tier 16 map here. We are going to be running on a 5 link. I don't have a 6 link yet. I'm waiting to find a Cloak of Defiance. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop this in. Uh, the only notable thing on here is it's got Beyond, Hexproof, we don't even curse. Uh, elemental Equilibrium, so 50% Cold Res, I think it is, right? Um, and then Reduced Flash Charges. So here we go. Let's just pop this in. Actually, maybe I'll just take the shrine first. What do we have over here? Oh my, a little bit of lag there. Uh, times two. Okay, so this is going to be a good fire one. So we'll do fire tower here. I'm going to give him a fire tower here. Upgrade, upgrade. Let's hit that next. Support tower here. Two beyond bosses from this one. I think that's two beyond bosses. Okay, nice. I'm really liking this league mechanic. Let me let me know what you guys think in the comments. I know a lot of people don't like it because it's it's not currently as rewarding as like Legion as an example, but in an SNS SSF environment, the raw currency drops are like super nice. But anyway, they are buffing the drop rates of the blighted map, so that's gonna be cool. Also, the servers are a little bit unstable now, so hopefully, hopefully that doesn't fuck us over. As you can see, one of the nice advantages of this build is you permafreeze pretty much everything. Um, I'm not in a six link, so if I was in a six link, I'd be using cold pen. That would ensure my freezing on anything that's pretty much not frozen. Only thing that probably doesn't get frozen are like red beasts, uh, some really tanky yellow beasts, sometimes some super tanky rares depending on the map mods, but usually all the rares are frozen. As an example of this abyss, I'll just like stand right here. These should all get frozen. Actually, here we go. The abyss doesn't get frozen. Oh, no, no. A little bit, a little bit. Still need a little bit more damage, but that's what the six link will be for. No, for some reason something's telling me to open this. Okay, I got scanned. I will also state that if you want to drastically increase your single target, 
using Pyro Mine will probably double your single target from what I have right now. Uh, I'm just waiting to get a Cloak of Defiance before I use that. He's gonna go down, so I'll just stand over here. Let's just go right over here now. And stand up here. Skill scan. Alright. But yeah, in reality, a Pyroclast Mine will do significantly more damage than this. Um, also, getting the Helm Enchant would, would do it. But anyway, let's talk about the actual character, not about the big dick numbers. So, <clears throat> from the last video, I have done a couple of things. I want to start with the skill tree and explain to you guys what I'm going to be doing. So, I have dropped Pierce. I've noticed that when you have very good damage or you're using a six link, uh, or in general, you feel that you're destroying content, essentially. Pierce is not really as good. Pierce is good for, like, blighted maps and maybe some other stuff where it's a row of monsters constantly spawning. But I actually got a Snake Pit ring. And Snake Pit states, uh, Projectiles from spells cannot pierce if in the right slot and gives plus one chain. Now, of course, your clear will be better if you use the chain support, but I'm happy with the way my clear is right now. This essentially gives us a one-target chain, which is enough for me to clear, and allows us to still focus on pure damage uh, support gems. This is what gives us the ability to freeze everything with, you know, not that much investment in currency. Um, so by acquiring this, I essentially dropped these three notes. Now, I'm also going to be doing a big respec, and I'm going to drop all of the Templar section here. Uh, and I'm going to be going over down here. I've already started to do it. I didn't expect it was going to take me this long to get a Cloak of Defiance. Uh, but the reason for the respec on dropping this left side and moving to the right side, you get Druidic Ride, so you get the Flask Effect charge or flask effect Duration and Flask Charges gained. This is good for running the map mod we just did, which 50% reduced Flask Charges gained. Uh, you have these baby nodes over here, which is actually Flask Effect. This affects the Evasion on your Jade, the Physical Damage Reduction on your... Uh, basalt, the movement speed on your Quicksilver, the prefix for Adrenaline on whatever you're using, and the dodge and spell dodge on your Quartz. So we'll be going here into Primal Spirit, which is also Mana Regen Flash Charges Gained, into this baby node here, because it's Flask Effect as well, and then Ballistic Mastery for one point for the proj damage and proj speed. Also going into the Evasion as well. Now, um, I've went ahead and I have anointed um, silent Steps, mainly because I really like Silent Steps, and essentially by anointing it, I just save three points on the tree. So that's something that I want to do. Now, by dropping this side here, you'll notice you're going to lose a lot of life with the Discipline and Training and the three life nodes here. So to compensate for the life loss, you have the ability to get a ton of jewels. You've got Jewel number one, Jewel number two, Jewel number three, Jewel number four. Each one of those jewels can also have life on them. You also have Jewel number five right here. Um, there also is a point in Path of Exile, in my opinion, where you don't really need... I, I actually didn't believe this at one point, but after playing Softcore, it kind of makes a bit more sense. Um, there's a point in Path of Exile where stacking life doesn't really... I mean, like, it's always good, don't get me wrong, but if something is going to shotgun and one-shot you, it doesn't matter if you have 7k life, 8k life, or 9k life. There's a good chance you just got hit for, like, 15k damage. So it's better to get things like Flask Effect, um, you know, Dodge Chance actual reduction which is why you can see for example i have spec oopsies i have spec like into silent steps which is the reduced damage taken from blinded enemies that stacks with your passive uh, born in the shadows i also figured out that the chance to blind on hit actually works for mines i didn't think it did for some reason so this um this node right here silent steps is pretty much the whole screen is permanently blinded because of your one chain so that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing with that respect. But again, to confirm, I cannot do that until I get a Cloak of Defiance, because Cloak of Defiance is what's going to enable me to drop this extra life here, um, since it's basically a 10%, well, it's 40% mind over matter. And then if you get the Clarity Watcher's Eye, it's 50%, but I don't think that's really going to happen. So going over my gear, I'm not using a Tremor Rod. I think Tremor Rod is a great weapon, a fantastic weapon, but when you're mapping, you don't really need a Tremor Rod. Uh, because I have decided to drop the Swift Assembly Support Gem, and I'm using Minefield now with Charge Mines, I don't really feel the need for having my Mines repeat. Having your Mines repeat is for sustain damage. So, what do you need sustain damage for? Guardians, super tanky bosses, Uber Elder, things like that. That's where Tremorod is really good. 
because you're effectively reducing the time you're standing still by half because you spend half the amount of time throwing it. If you throw 20 mines at Uber Elder and detonate them with Tremorod, it repeats. For people who don't know what Tremorod is, I'm just going to show you right over here. This is a Tremorod. Mines can be detonated an additional time. So this gives you the flexibility of being able to move around and stuff. I also get a really common question that says, Pox, what am I supposed to use? Do I use a staff? Am I supposed to dual wield scepters? Do I dual wield wands? Am I supposed to use daggers? What is better? Well, theoretically, I'm not really sure exactly what is best, but it's pretty simple. Whatever you can find the best gear of, that's what you're going to be using. Either way, they're all sharing the similar stats. Wands have the implicit of spell damage. Daggers have the implicit of crit. Um, <clears throat> scepters have the implicit of elemental damage or penetration. The only thing I would tell you to stay away from is like low base daggers because their crit is not as high. And obviously do not use the cast speed wands because that does not affect you in any type of way. And if you plan on using a staff that's not a tremor rod, remember that the whole point of using a staff is to get the extra plus the gems. Because then you're using like a 7 link rather than a 6 link. The, the advantage of wands is you can technically become a little bit more tanky because if you look, for example, I have like 109 mana roll on this wand. So I have two strong wands. One of them has a mana roll. That's kind of like a life roll because I'm playing mind over matter. So that's kind of like one little advantage. So I would like to go over my gear as well. Um, so you can see the two, the two wands I'm using. Nothing crazy good. My helmet. My helmet is what I decided to opt for because I'm SSF and I didn't want to spend my currency six linking or five linking something that I'm not really going to use for potentially a very long time. Um, so I'm waiting for the Cloak of Defiance before I drop all of the jewelers and all of the fuses into it. So I decided to make do with this. This is essentially a five link helmet because of the hypothermia, right? It's a level 20 hypothermia. To craft this, you must have a shaped base. I also got lucky and got a life roll on it. So I decided to farm betrayal to get the plus one projectile gem. So this is kind of like a five and a third link. I call it a third because if you have a level four in power, that's plus three levels. This gives one. Now, another thing is people say, well, why do you use it? Because it gives you pierce. And isn't that kind of redundant because you're using chain? Not really because snake pit literally disables pierce. So you get the plus one gem without a downside. Although one pierce is not really that much of a downside. It's totally fine. You get more than one pierce. It gets a bit icky. Uh, my ring here, this ring will be swapped with a dream fragments. Dream fragments is this ring right here. The reason why I like Dream Fragments is because it says cannot be frozen and cannot be chilled. That synergizes with Pyromaniac so that you cannot be shocked, ignited, frozen, or chilled. On top of that, it also has like a tier 1 mono regen roll, maybe it's tier 2, and a really good maximum mono roll. The maximum mono helps a lot when you go Cloak of Defiance because you're going to have a 60-40 conversion. Also, this allows you to wipe a prefix off one of your flasks that has freeze and chill. So, for example, this could be a reflexes, well, it would be a chemist jade flask of reflexes, which can roll up to 100% increased evasion. So, currently, we're rocking not too much. We're rocking 12,000 evasion. If I had this frenzy charge node, which I'll be getting in the future, um, this would be 13,000 evasion. And then you have the prefix for adrenaline, sorry, for reflexes, which gives up to 100% increased evasion, which is going to be another couple thousand. So this is the helmet that I'm using, like I said. Super budget if you don't want to go with something crazy. Um, this is the ring right now, nothing that good. I did decide to opt out and go with the damage taken gained as mana when you're hit. I have this on my amulet as well. Uh, you could also go ahead and spec into revelry with the anointment. So that would be 18% of damage taken gained as mana, um, which is a pretty good amount. But I'm happy with this. I didn't really want to go into revelry, but it's really not a bad option. Now... The other thing to note is uh, my boots are pretty shit. I need to get more total resistance on them. Uh, the reason why I want total resistance is because when I drop the Templar side, I'm going to lose another 12 all res, and I'm currently a little starved for resistances because of the way my gear is. Uh, but if I find a Wise Oak, Wise Oak would completely fix my resistances. Not a problem at all there. The other annoying thing is because Snake Pit is also on a Sapphire base and Dream Fragments is on a Sapphire base, I have so much abundance of cold resist Normally in Trade League, it's not a problem because you just buy gear that doesn't have cold res, but in SSF, you're weighted to get everything at the same chance. So trying to craft that gear is a little bit difficult. Um, my gloves are pretty good. You know, just life and resistance, nothing that crazy. Instead of putting a mana roll, I opted out for the hybrid evasion roll, uh, mainly because my mana is currently pretty sick. We've got 1.8k. That's chilling. Pull up one more thing here. I also have a quick clip for you guys to watch. It's kind of cool. I crafted myself a belt. I said that 
if you guys watched the original video, um, I said I was trying to craft a shaped belt because shaped can roll reduced crit damage taken and shaped belt can also roll percentage mana recovery, which is a multiplier to your mana regen. Unfortunately, I'm not really getting lucky with that and I got lucky with this that I'll show you right now. So this is a tiny trial to explain how this works real fast. All right, for boys. Here we go. So for anyone who's new who doesn't understand, this is a betrayal mechanic. Uh, what this means is you have 20 seconds to use as much currency from this tab as you would like. And this is the belt we ended up with. Okay, fucking give me the Alc Orb. Alright, can I Chaos? No, give me the Exalts. Alright, look shit. How do I fix it? A Null. Okay, fucking Exalt. Okay, uh... Uh-huh. Uh... So... At which point, we've got a Tier 1 Strength roll, which is really good, because dropping the Templar side, you're going to lose a total of 30 Strength. I also got a Mono roll, which is great. I used an Exalt, got a 37 Lightning Res, pretty good. It's not Cold Res, so that's good. Slammed another Exalt, got Reduced Flash Charges used. The reason why Reduced Flash Charges used is really good is, oftentimes, when you play Path of Exile, Basalt Flasks are kind of annoying to roll. Um, I just realized this Basalt doesn't even reduce charges. Wow, I'm full Pepega. Um... You'll get something like this, where it's 23% reduced charges used, but your flask will say 31 of 60. Which means you need to kill like two monsters to refill it, but it can just be annoying on a boss fight, how you can only hit your flask one time. So getting a reduced charges used is super, super good in my opinion. Then we got lucky with a 400 armor and a 93 life. The armor doesn't help us at all, it's our only armor piece. I don't know exactly how armor is calculated, but it gives us 2% physical damage. I know that's not real, but... I would assume having a tiny bit of armor helps a little bit compared to having literally zero armor. So this is the belt we decided on. Uh, like I said, not exactly the perfect piece that I wanted, but totally solid, cannot complain. Um, which moves me on to the point of jewels. So jewels for this build are really sick. You have so many different ways you can roll. So you've got like, uh, for example, if you're rolling Abyss Jewels, Abyss Jewels can roll uh, cold damage to spells, cold damage while dual wielding. You can also roll like lightning damage, fire damage, you can roll a bunch of different stats. But one really neat thing is if you use Explosives Expert, which I'll talk about here shortly because I know I respect this, um, using a simple jewel with flat fire on it to spells actually gives you 30% crit multi because if you don't have any fire damage on your gear, then you're not gaining the benefit of the crit multi. I don't actually have any yet, but when I get my six link set up for single target pyro, uh, pyro class mine, then I will have that. So the reason why I decided to go with uh, Respect Demolition Expert and go into Explosives Expert is because I noticed that higher tier maps, if a target is going to run to me, it's not going to matter if Hinder is on them because they're going to make it to me regardless. I do not believe you can apply Hinder again. Once a target has Hinder on them, I'm pretty sure it cannot be affected by Hinder again. Maybe if you're playing something like Blight, it's different, but I, I'm pretty sure for Demolition Specialist, you cannot re-Hinder a target. So for things like Red Beasts or Super, ta super Tanky Essences, it really didn't matter if I reduced their movement speed because they were going to catch up to me in two seconds anyway. So I decided to just opt out and go with Explosives Expert. Now I will say that in the early stages of mapping, I was very happy to use Demolition Specialist. I really liked it. But when I noticed my character was scaling very hard and I was doing a ton of damage, um, pretty much when I got Snake Pit, that's when I decided to make the respec from Demolition Specialist into Explosives Expert. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, that pretty much covers most of the stuff. Um, like I said, the direction of where I'm going to be going is respecting here and going towards here. Haven't really had any issues on anything in the Atlas. Delve has been pretty great. Um, just trying to basically replace these boots. Um, I think that really is about it. I thought I was going to say something else and now I don't really remember. Oh yeah, I'll talk about my skill gems and links. There we go. My apologies. So I'm using Icicle Mine uh, with Inspiration. If you guys are not aware of how Inspiration works, Inspiration is literally just a better version of Control Destruction. So the reason why it's a better version of Control Destruction is if you read what it says, supported skills deal 8% more elemental damage per inspiration charge. You have five charges. That's 40% more elemental damage. It also gives you a little bit of crit chance. So 50% increased crit is 3% crit rate for Icicle Mines. You have Inspiration on forever. It, it, when it falls off, you just use one attack and it comes right back again. So definitely look at Inspiration. Uh, I'm also using Charged Mines in conjunction with Minefield. 
Now, if your damage is lacking, I would recommend not using Charge Mines and using something like Cold Pen. I'm not using Trap and Mine because it reduces your throwing speed and Minefield already cuts that a lot. But the reason why I went into Charge Mines is because it makes the throwing speed feel a little bit better and I already have enough damage to not really have to worry about things. However, when I do that respec from Templar, I will be taking this Frenzy Charge and I will be taking this Frenzy Charge. Because this is essentially, between these two Frenzy Charges, it's 8% more damage, 20% increased evasion, and 20% throwing speed for 4 ascendancy points. Or sorry, 4 points on the tree. I think that's totally worth it and I'm definitely going into it like I said. Um, I also decided, to, oh yeah, and then my sixth link would be Cold Pen. I'm not sure on the links for Power Class Mines, so I can't really comment on that yet, but I want to show you guys another cool interaction with Flame Dash. I did not realize how good Flame Dash was now. So with the introduction of them adding in, uh, or well, basically changing mines, Smoke Mine shares the same cooldown as Flame Dash. And maybe it did this before, but I didn't know. But you have the ability to throw a Smoke Mine, and, oh, actually, they're fixing this double throw, so I'm excited for that. But... Um, you can throw a smoke mine and use a flame dash at virtually the same time. And if you if you use this like this, you see how this this delay is on there. If you use flame dash normally or anything like shield charge, any mobility skill, if you use it consecutively, you'll notice you'll get you'll get that anim not animation lock, but basically the normal variant of it. You won't get the instant cast of it. But if you use smoke mine, you can get the instant cast of it. So as an example, I'm gonna go to my portal. Okay, I fucked up. That doesn't count. I got stuck from there. Let's try again. And you can go like that. This is really good because you can you can bob and weave through different things. Um, for example, like if you're if you're running away from something, you can just really easily like you know super fast. You can cut a corner. Um, it's I know it seems a little tryhard, but it's it's so fluid. It feels so nice. Um, so that's one thing. Other than that, I think I've pretty much covered everything that I could for you guys. I don't think I can really cover anything else. So. Yep, that's pretty much about it. Uh, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves along with the video. Um, I keep thinking I'm forgetting something, but I don't think I am. So I apologize for the, the pausing and the stuttering. Uh, you could also use a Combs Heart, but I don't really plan on using a Combs Heart. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Or feel free to hop on the live stream and go ahead and just PM me on there and... If you have any questions, I'll just be more than happy to answer them. Take care. Have a wonderful time. See you guys all tomorrow.